studio we have. Shalom, most high. Let's bless Israel, Captain Isaac. Captain Isaac here on another episode of Scripts. All right, Officer Amio, put together a great class. Right. <laughs> Very important topic. All right, we're going to go over that gossiping spirit. That gossiping spirit. Yeah, yeah. And we got also in studio. Uh, Officer got a Oh, uh, praise, man. Um, like the captain said, I, I don't know if it's going to be a great class, but it's a very important class, that uh, a very needful class that uh, that has to be done. Um, today we're going to talk about having that that murmuring, that backbiting, and that gossiping spirit. On us. Um, if you could imagine a town called murmuring, backbiting, and gossiping, there are many different avenues to get to that town. So today we're going to discuss. Some some ways, some avenues, some roads that we take that you might not be aware of. I know uh, me putting the class together, I found out that I'm guilty of some of this stuff myself. But it depends on, it really depends on a lot of it, the spirit that you're rolling in when you're talking to another person about somebody. Because we as officers end up a lot of times we have to do counseling. Or, or issues might arise in the school <laughs> as to where um, it's needful for us to talk about a certain brother or a certain sister and the issues that's going on with them. Is that gossiping, a murmur, a backbite? No. Because we're trying to get to um, the, the root of the issue or the problem. But a lot of times issues arise in the school because we sit around talking about different people. You're not trying to get to a root of a problem. You're trying to cause a problem. Mm -hmm. So today, we're going to go through some stuff. Give me um, Sirach 28 and 25. We'll start there. We'll start right there. Because when, whenever you're sitting around and you're talking about a brother or sister, like I said, it all depends on the mindset at the time. Mm -hmm. So you have to realize and recognize the spiritual role in it. So this is all this is needful when doing so. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 28 and verse 25. Uh -huh. And weigh thy words in a balance, and make a door and bar for thy mouth. It says, weigh your words in a balance. Meaning, think before you speak. Is what I'm about to say, is it needful to come out? Will it hurt somebody? Will it assassinate someone's character? The words that I'm about to put out? Weigh my words in the balance. Then it says, "Put make a door and a bar for your mouth. So imagine, if you will, a door. Some things just don't need to come out. Some things just don't, don't need to be said, period. Then it says, make a bar for your mouth. Some things you allow, you, you can't allow to flow through, but that bar is going to hold some things back. Put a filter on your speech. Yeah. Yep. Because in the power of the power of the tongue is life and death. And the power of the tongue is life and death. A lot of times we'll say things, and even sometimes just in jester, just in joking, we'll say things. And guess what? In those words, you it might cause somebody else to feel a certain way. Okay. And you don't know. A lot of people, a lot of people, when you come into this truth, a lot of them are emotional, dealing with emotional problems and so forth. Yeah. So a lot of times we'll say certain things and to us it'll be a joke or whatever, but they might take it as something as something extremely, extremely serious. You know, and they might feel a certain way about it. We have to be very mindful, especially as leaders in this truth, as leaders in Israel. We have to be very mindful of our speech. Exactly. Exactly. So, like I said earlier, imagine a city called Murmuring, Backbiting, and Gospel. And we got, we're going to travel down the different roads or show the different roads that we all take to get to that place where we, where we murmur, gossip, and backbite. The first, the first road, the first avenue that, that we take to get to that place is slander. What is slander? Slander is spreading rumor or lies that you know not to be true. Slander is spreading lies. Basically, that's all it is. But now, this was set up from the beginning. Give me that in uh, Leviticus. 
Leviticus 19 and 16. 1917. No, 16. 16. The book of Leviticus, mm -hmm. chapter 19, and verse 16. Yes. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Mm -hmm. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. So the Bible tells us it was established from the beginning. Don't go up and down being a talebearer. Don't go up and down gossiping amongst each other about other people. This was established early on. We come out of Egypt, boom, don't go gospel. This ain't what we do. Right? Go to um Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. It's funny that you said that because when we came up out of Egypt, we were murmuring. Yeah. And we were murmuring against against Moses. After all the miracles <laughs> the most high show, we was murmuring against Moses. But every time we every time Moses said, you, you think you're murmuring against me, you're murmuring against the most high God. Because what we have to realize in even within Israel, right? Let's just speak about in the truth. Uh -huh. Um, around the repentant. We call ourselves repentant Israelites, right? The most high has moved us moved the spirit of the leaders that came before us, bishops, deacons on down, to have people in certain positions of leadership. So when you're murmuring against leadership. And talking smack against leadership, who are you really murmuring against? Because promotion comes from the most high, right? People are set up as leaders. You're really murmuring against leadership. You're murmuring against the most high. The same way our forefathers in the wilderness, they weren't murmuring against Moses per se. They were mo they were murmuring against the most high God. So you really have to be careful of the mindset that you're in once you start to speak against. A person in, in the thoughts like the captain was going into. Give me, matter of fact, that, that's a good segue. Give me Proverbs 6 and uh, 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 16. Uh -huh. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. He says seven are an abomination to him. Read on. A proud look, a lying tongue, uh -huh. and hands that shed innocent blood. Read. And heart that divides it wicked imagination. That's, that's going into, into your slander. That goes into your lies. You devise a wicked imagination. Read on. Feet that be swift and run into mischief. Uh -huh. A false witness that speaketh lies. Look at that. Once again, a false witness that speaketh lies. You are just slandering a person. Knowing what you're saying not to be true, but you put it out there anyway. This is the road. This is one of the roads that lead to the city of murmuring, backbiting, and gossip. Read on. And he that so a discord among brethren. Because that's all that happens. You are just slandering somebody. It's just sowing so discord amongst everybody in, in, in the entire school. And, and if you're not careful, it jumps from school to school, wherever, wherever you go or wherever your lie goes, here comes discord. Here, here, here comes uh, some riffraff amongst the body. All because of you. That's one avenue. So now, let's, let's look at another way that we get to that. Rumors. Rumors is another avenue that we take to get to the city of murmuring, gossiping, and backbiting. So what is a rumor? A rumor, a rumor is information that cannot be verified you don't know whether it's true or false, but you put it out there anyway. A lot of this happens within the body. A lot of this happens amongst the brothers. The sisters, man. Brothers do it every once in a while. I'm not saying that, that we are not without fault when it comes to it, but it happens among the sisters. I, I, I doubt to say this, this on a weekly basis. <laughs> hey, give me the scripture in uh, Proverbs. We're we going to be slipping back and forth in Proverbs today. Um, Proverbs 13 and 3. Yes, sir. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13, and verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. Oh. Mm. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his You know why? Because spread the rumors. Let me tell you something. Everybody in everybody that they come in and congregate on the Sabbath with you, they still trying to purge some spirits from you. They are not fully repentant. 
So you go around running your mouth, spreading stories that might be true or might not, but you're going to put it out there anyway, you might be playing with your life. Everybody is not, is, is not full of repentance in this truth. Some of these dudes still got some, 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 a whole bunch of street up. That ain't got no problem taking, you know taking it to you or coming to see about you. And they ain't trying to hear, hey, the Bible says, uh, that should not be a striker, brother. <laughs> Touch not my anointing, brother. You're going to get some hot letting you. The physician is going to have to anoint you after that. <laughs> So we, we can't run around speaking rumors at all. You feel free to jump in any time. Yes, you, if, if you're going to speak, you have to make sure that whatever you're speaking is true. Give me that in uh, Proverbs 12 and 17. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 17. Uh -huh. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. He said, he that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. So whenever you do, make sure Whenever you say, make sure that to the best of your knowledge, it's true. If it's an if or an, put a bar over your mouth. Put a door over your mouth. Don't let the information come out. Because now you're at fault with it. It's your fault. Anything come down, that person might stumble and fall out the truth. Not a blood on your hand. All because you wanted to start a room. Matter of fact, give me that um, Proverbs 18 says. I, I like this scripture. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, and verse 17. Uh -huh. He that is first in his own cause so, se go on, sorry. seemeth just. So when you spread the rumor, you're trying to seem justified to a person. Like, I know what I'm talking about. I got the information. Believe me. It says, He that is first in his own cause seemeth just. But if, if I'm listening to the rumor, it's my job to do what? Read on. But his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. It's, 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 it's my neighbor's job, who I'm talking to, to make sure that, to verify the information I'm putting out. How you verify the information? Hey, brother, come here. Let me, let me holler at you real quick. Hey, sister, come here. Let me holler at you real quick. That in a whole lot of foolish right off the bat. The brother said so-and-so about you. The sister said this, that, and the third. Is it true? That'll end a whole lot of foolishness right off the bat. And you won't have this discord within the body. You won't have this rip. But let's move on. Another way that we get to um, that city of murmuring, backbiting, and gossiping, another road, another avenue, is straight up backbiting. It's straight up backbiting. You know what I mean? Um, this used, now backbiting usually happens within a small group of people. You got a little clique. They get together, they trust each other, and they, they, they continually talk amongst themselves. Nine times out of ten, every time they get together, they talking about somebody. They, they trust each other now. <laughs> tr I trust that you ain't going to correct me, and I trust that I ain't going to correct you with whatever Evil is being spoken. Exactly. So that's what they. That's that's, that's what it means. That's called, they, that's called contingency talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that contingency yep. talk. You know that those contingency talks. Guess what? That destroyed nations of people. Things like that is what started wars. You know, going on with lies and slander. Look, hey, look at that movie. Um, look at that movie Rosewood. Yeah. We all seen Rosewood Massacre. We seen what happened with that one little lie. Destroyed a whole village of people. The but the 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 danger that comes with backbiting is that the, the people doing it is that they deal falsely with you each and every time they see. That's the deal with backbiting. You you are okay. that scripture. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the one the captain was just referring to. Go ahead. The book of Sirach, chapter twenty eight and verse fourteen. Uh -huh. A backbiting tongue had disquieted many. Mm -hmm. And driven them from nation to nation. Strong cities had been poured down and overthrown the houses of great men. Why? Because you got people sitting in a little circle talking. They clicked up, plotting on how to, on how to do this, that, and the third. It's a it's a real strategic thing that comes with backbiting. That's that's 
that's on a whole nother level. When, when you really think about it, the most high hates that thing. Because you got to deal falsely with your brother. You got to, you got to Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or whatever day, you got to be here backbite against the brother. Then when you see him on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, hey shalom, brother, how you doing? I'm plotting, plotting against you, but you all right? <clears throat> this part of, give me a uh, what's the songs 101 and 5. This is what the most high say he's gonna do. Book of Psalms, chapter 101 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Whoso privily slandered his neighbor, him will I cut off. So if you sit around privately slandering your, your neighbor, you backbiting because you're doing it in the secret, the most I say he's going to cut you off. Read on. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. Mm. So you got to be careful on that thing. But how do you stop a backbite? According to the scriptures. Give me uh, Proverbs 25 and 23. Proverbs 25 and 23. This how, is how we start with that. The book, of, the book of Proverbs, chapter 25 and verse 23. Uh -huh. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a bat. I'm going to read that again. Yeah. The north wind driveth away rain. So it says, just as the wind come and drive away the rain, take away the rain. Read on. So doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. So an angry face drives away a backbiting tongue. When they when they come at you with the foolishness, what was the uh, what to do? That what's the uh, what's the real what's real? The little mean? Oh, they was crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta hit them with the angry man face. Get away from around me with that foolishness. Drives away the backbite according to the scripture. You have to ask yourself, how come that person even felt comfortable enough to come to me and backbite in the first place? There has to be a reason. That person had to see something in you for, for me to be like, hey, I think I can come to you and, and talk bad about everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I've what I've seen, especially as of late, you know, when I walked in, you was talking about sisters. I ain't gonna say most of the time, I don't want to paint a broad brush, but I know as of late, I've seen it where they'll attach themselves to younger sisters. When I say younger, I mean young age of spirit. Mm -hmm. So they'll be young and young in the truth, a month, two months, three months, six months, whatever the case is, you know, still trying to get their feet up under them and, you know, as far as having the senses exercised to be able to discern between good and evil, right? Yeah. So they'll attach themselves or leech, I'll say leech, they'll leech <laughs> themselves to a younger spirit because then they know that there's certain things that they can say around or to a younger sister that they would never say around a, a, a age sister or a sister that's been around. When I say age, I mean a sister that's been around a little bit longer, two, three, four, five years in. Where okay, I can I can discern when a yo sister, what the hell? That was evil as hell. Why would you say something like that? But a sister has been in six months. You ain't really they they are not really they don't have a, a spiritual ear for the most part to be able to discern you know certain speech. Exactly. You know, in terms of backbiting, gossiping, whatever the case is. So that's 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 what I've seen. That's that's what I've noticed. It's evil, you know, because sisters have been around <laughs> long enough to know. Um, you know, the, the scripture talks about being around the old, the, excuse me, to, to continually be around those that are wise. But for whatever reason, you're always around very young, young, young spirits because you know you can get away with certain things that you would never be able to get away with around sisters that have been around a little bit longer. And I'm saying sisters per, uh, purpose, for, you know, for a reason. Yeah. I'm, I, I really want to stress that I'm talking about sisters because, you know, the gossip happens, spirit happens. A gossip the spirit is usually amongst them anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have men who gossip, you know, but as far as a majority, of, of oftentimes it's usually found around women, you know, and the men that gossip, those are the men who just 
It might have female tendencies, you know. But the gossiping spirit usually falls upon our, our oh, sisters. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's the job of you men, mainly yeah. married men, for real. Because if you brothers are married, your wives gossiping, oh. always sowing discord. Mm -hmm. I always, I always say, I always gotta look at the men, because I expect the woman to be like that. I expect that. Years in Babylon, destroying their minds, you know, following Esau's example, looking at uh, loving hip hop, New York housewives, or bad girls, or whatever. I expect them to be like that. But when I hear these sisters are married to men, and they're still like that, and men in the truth, now we have a problem. Now you're on my radar, and you don't want to be on my radar. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, try to uh, find the scripture, get it straight. But you really have to be mindful when it comes to backbiting. Because like, like we said earlier, that thing, it happens in the circle. It happens among people that are comfortable enough with each other. They have an issue with somebody, but don't want to bring it out. This is what the Bible, give me um, Sirach, what's this, uh, 42 and 14? Uh, 42? Yep, Sirach, 42 and 14. The book of Sirach, chapter 42 and verse 14. Yep. Better is the churlish, churlishness of a man than a courteous woman. Uh -huh. So the word churlishness means a bad attitude or just being rude. It says better is for a person to be rude in dealing with somebody else, go ahead. Then a courteous woman, uh -huh. a woman, I say, which bringeth shame and reproach. So it's better for you to, to come at that person with a rude attitude, a bad attitude, so I know that there's an issue between me and you, than to come at me in, in with, as courteous as a woman, shalom and this, that, and the third, and, the, you know what I'm saying? and I think everything is good. Why? Because it's an effeminate spirit. So you got to be mindful how we do. I want to touch on something Captain said. He, he mentioned about, um, uh, you know, with the husbands that are married to sisters that are um, habitual backbiters, habitual gospels, whatever the case is, and you have a difficult time controlling uh, your household. You you really got to understand that they you, you're ruining your household, and in turn you're really being a detriment to the nation. Um, read Sirach, what is it? It's 30-something uh, where it says, uh, no hedge, the possession of school. Mm -hmm. That's a good example. That's a very good scripture. The book of Sirach, chapter 36 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. Where no hedge is, the possession is spoiled. So it says, where no hedge is, a hedge is a, pr a protection, a protective barrier. Something that you, you want to make sure that whatever is on the other side of it, nothing is getting to it. There's no danger. There's no um, nothing that's getting to whatever possession is behind that hedge. So it says where no hedge is, meaning where there's no protection, it says the possession is for. What is the possession? For you men, it's your wives. They're spoiled by TV. They're spoiled by other spirits that are in the congregation that are horrible example being setting horrible examples on how to be a righteous israelite woman and because you're not protecting them from it from it they're spoiled so now they're bringing that spirit in your house which is in turn uh setting a precedent in the congregation to now where us as leaders us as shepherds now something gotta happen now we gotta make a move somebody gotta go because a little leaven ends up leavening the whole lump a little backbiting now the whole, you got half the congregation against each other. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's speaking of evil, uh, evil against each other. Nope, don't nobody trust nobody. Yeah, don't trust that sister. Yeah, that sister. Yeah, man, she, she got an evil <laughs> spirit on her. Yeah, that brother right there, man. Yeah, man, that brother. He, he off. What do you do? I just don't know. That thing is, that thing is real. That thing is real. So it's no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you good. It says where no hedges. There the uh, it says there the possession is spoiled so you as the man the head of the house the leader of the house it's your job it's your obligation 
as an Israelite man to make sure that you're putting certain things in place to make sure that your wife isn't spoiled and that she isn't in imminent danger of whether it be a spiritual STD, and that's what I'm talking about, say STD, spiritually transmitted disease, that she isn't spoiled by social media because she don't know how to take her friggin' fingers off the keyboard. Because how many times have we seen that? You go on Facebook or Insta or whatever, and you're posting these ghost messages, and you've got all kind of uh, uh, subliminal messages, and you shooting shots as if we were taught it, as if we don't know what the hell the message is, is talking about or who you're talking about. Like, we ain't... <laughs> I, y'all think just because y'all don't put a name in the message, we don't know what's going on. Come on, man. Y'all are talking to y'all. I think we spiritual. Hell, <laughs> try to be. We, you know, we try to be, man. So stop it, you know. And brothers, make sure y'all stand up and make sure that y'all are that hedge and y'all are using the scriptures to apply in your house and make sure that you are giving your wife the proper scriptures to apply because that's yet that's the hedge. Is the scriptures the laws of God that that it only works if you are able to rule your household? If you walk in your house and you tell your wife, "Hey, I need you to clean up," and she's like, "I do it later," or "I get to it when I get to it," and she gonna pretty much do what she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You you can you can try to be that head to, to try to hold on. Uh, hey hey babe, I don't I don't need you posting on Facebook like that. Hey, I, it, it's my page. And you know what's crazy, old Samuel? You usually see that with the with the good looking sisters, the real good looking sisters. Yeah. Usually, I'm not saying all, I'm not saying all, but usually the ones, the good looking ones, can either be a Jezebel or have that. That mean spirited gossiping spirit that we're going over now. That rebellious spirit is usually a good looking one. Yeah. You got you got some that's real strong in the face too that got that spirit. Oh yeah. I ain't gonna call them ugly, it's just strong in the face. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> real strong. Race. Can we read one more scripture? Read Genesis 18, 19 to go off. That's that that's that tender eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. You know, we want to we want to build the brothers up to make sure that you know how to. And our forefathers, they set the right examples. They said, I said like this, they set right examples, some set the wrong examples. But either way, it's something we gotta learn from. Come on. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19. For I know, for I know him. Talking about Abraham, the Lord knew Abraham. That he will command his children. And his household after him. That he would command that he would stand up on his two feet and he would have the <laughs> testicular fortitude to tell his wife to put up the phone and he would take the phone, cut, shut off the Facebook and Instagram, if that's what she got a problem with, to make sure that she was, whatever duty she had around the house, that those things were getting done. Our forefather Abraham, he commanded his house. He wasn't abusive. No. He wasn't verbally abusive. He didn't have to do none of that. But he commanded the respect and the honor in his house. Why? Read on. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Because Abraham was strong in the laws of God. That's what he commanded in his house. That everybody was keeping God's commandments in the house. Yeah, you can either get with it or get left. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you either get with it or you get left. That's it. Go ahead. Look, um, what you was bringing out earlier about that that spirit floating around with sisters. Oh, don't don't mess with that. So I, I can I can I can I can test the Bible sometimes. I can verify that. I can attest. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> um, it was some sisters even dealing with my wife. The sister had came to my wife and told me, like, yeah, that sister told me not to mess with you because you got an evil spirit on you. I said, what? She was like, yeah. And then, like, two weeks later, another sister came and told the same thing. I'm like, boy, that sister, boy, that sister wicked as hell over there. That sister wicked as hell over there. But her husband let her do what she wants to. 
You know what I'm saying? So I can attest to that thing. That thing ain't real. That thing ain't real. But all depends on how you handle the situation. You know what I mean? My wife, she went and talked to the sister. The sister denied it. So you just let things go. You know what I mean? But hey, I tell you what. Hey, can they can they call in today? If you want to call in with a question, please feel free. Give them the number. 214-431-5032. Again, that's 214-431-5032. Write the number down. Call in if you got a question or issue that, that you want to bring light to concerning the topic. We ain't going way off left field on that. But concerning the topic, then please feel free to call in. Um, The next avenue or the road that we I, I want to go down that takes us to the city of murmuring, backbiting, and gossiping. Like I told y'all at the beginning of the show, putting this thing together, I'm like, bro, I'm guilty of some of this stuff myself. You know what I mean? We always have, we have to constantly do self-examinations and, and be and be honest with ourselves. That's the only way that you can, you can heal yourself and get over the thing that you're struggling with. But this next one is called, I'm joking, but not really. This takes you down to the city of murmuring, backbiting, and gossip. What's an example of that? Let's say my wife goes out of town. And the brother says, oh, since his wife out of town, maybe he can maybe he can focus on doing the most out of his work now. Everybody ha ha ha, but the point and purpose of it was is to bring doubt against another brother's character and so because you got you might have a brother standing around that, that don't really know me you know what i'm saying but now he's like damn so he be on his life like that he under his life like that he can't his wife got him not doing you know what i'm saying the business like that or if a brother been sitting on the couch or just at the house you know what i'm saying it's a lot this a lot of times where i'm at the house myself you know what I'm saying? And something comes up, like, oh, so yeah, this this finally got you out the house now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to to say that I don't do nothing while I'm at the house. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But said it in a joking manner, but well, in I'm your saying, mind, yeah, yeah, you yeah. like, man, that brother lays his head. Really? Yeah. I'm joking, but not really. Is another road that leads us down to the city of murmuring, backbiting, and gospel. Give me Psalms 35. Start at 14. Yes, sir. Psalms 35 and verse 14. The book of Psalms, chapter 35 and verse 14. Now look how this brother was. Read. I behave myself as though he had been my friend mm -hmm. or brother. So he's like, I came at him like we had been real cool. I didn't. I, if he needed something, I'm right there for him. You know what I'm saying? What, whatever. He can always count on me. I behave myself as though he was my friend or my brother. Read up. Read up. I bow down heavily uh -huh. as one that mourned for his mother. Read up. But in my adversity, and I'm going to read it again, but in my adversity, they rejoice. So they round that joke. Read. And gather themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me and knew it not. They did so, and I knew it not. And I knew it not. Because when 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 the whole thing comes up about uh I'm joking, but I'm real serious, it usually happens not in front of that person, but with, with two or three people to the side. You know what I'm saying? So the brother's like, it, it came against me, but I knew it not. Read on. They did tear me and cease not mm -hmm. with hypocritical mockers and feasts. So he said, they did tear me and cease not. They came at me. Oh, no, none but jokes all day long. And they cease not. Then he says what? He said the hypocritical what? Hypocritical mockers and feasts. Uh -huh. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. So why do you call them hypocritical? Because when they seen him, it was, hey, bro, small, more than like that. It was all good when they seen him. But then they get around in their little group again, and it's nothing but jokes. 
and and you, it comes across as jokes, but you're real serious about the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of times this happens when when alcohol is involved. It happens when when a little wine gets flowing a little bit too easy. Mm -hmm. Then you get diarrhea in the mouth. Yeah. The sisters get around. Oh yeah, you know that sister. Now we sitting up in council for an hour because the sister around there running her mouth. Hey, you got sisters that do that? Get a little sip on amongst other sisters, and they start talking about their husband. Mm -hmm. Whether it be sexually, how how their husbands put it down in the bedroom, or how they don't put it down in the bedroom, or just you know talk about them in a negative light or whatever. We got to be very mindful of that, you know. And it all come across in a joking manner, but I'm real serious. It comes across in a joking manner, but I'm real serious right now. This is what happens. This is the, another road that leads us down to murmuring, backbiting, and gossip. So we have to be mindful. Give me that, uh, do me off real quick, bro. Because, like we was talking about, that it happens with, uh, with wine. Give me that in Proverbs 21. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Wine is a mocker, uh -huh. strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Because you'll, you'll get a little wine in you, and now here comes the mockery, here comes the jokes and the laugh. But then you take a little step farther, you get on that strong drink. Some of you brothers, sisters too. I know some sisters that try to they try to hang in with the brothers when they come to the drink. Not, not, not the joking of them got a little bit too serious. Now you now somebody all in their feelings. If you get caught up in this thing, then you are not wise. That's why the scriptures tell us that wine has to be drunk in season, meaning at the right time. You have to make a door and a bar for your mouth. Weigh your words before you speak them. It's very, very important. Um, the next one is seed planting. Seed planting is very, very, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, it can be very harmful. You know what I mean? Now, like I said earlier at the beginning of the show, you have to know what mindset that you're rolling in. You have to know the spirit that you're going to come with when you're planting seeds. What's planting seeds? Planting seeds, um, it's, it's a way to, to put a thought into somebody's head that makes a person looks looks at a person differently you know what i'm saying you 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 basically change somebody's thought just just by one simple word or one simple phrase like you can say oh man you know what it's weird how that brother he always over there with the sister and leave it alone <laughs> now you don't plan to see the light now i gotta watch this brother but depending on the spirit that you're rolling in it can be helpful or can be detrimental to somebody to, to uh, someone's character. If we sit up at the leadership table and I see that, hey, I'm still living well. Why, why, why are you always on it? You know what I'm saying? Now we got to watch watch the brother or snatch him up. Brother, why the hell are you always over there with the, you know what I'm saying? We got to find out what's going on. But if you're doing it to, to cause harm to someone's character, you know it up here already. It's in your mind. That I'm putting this out there to harm you. Premeditated. Premeditated. <clears throat> and the whole the whole reason that this class even came up because we just had an issue with this. Just had an issue with this thing. Want to say something? So it's it's needful that the whole the whole issue with the different avenues to get to the murmuring, backbiting, and gossip that it needs to be covered. 
So we, like I said, we just had an issue dealing with this thing. Give me this in um in James chapter three, verse two. Because just like I said, you you will drop a little seed and leave it alone. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah. We're going to reverse. Verse 3, we're going to go 3, 4, and 5. All right, the book of James, chapter 3 and verse 3. Yep. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they obey us, that they obey us. So you know what a bit is? A bit is just that little iron piece that they put in, into a horse's mouth with the leather straps on each side. Read on. And we turn about their whole body. So with that little strap and that little bit, you can turn the whole, you can, you pull it to the right, the horse going to go to the right. Pull it to the left, he's going to go to the left. Read on. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, mm -hmm. yet they are turned about with very with a very small helm. Read. Whithersoever the, the governor listed, even so the tongue is a little member. The tongue is a small thing. The tongue is a small member and it plants small seeds. Read on. And boasted great things. Uh -huh. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. A, a little matter. Something very small as, why that brother here always over there dealing with some sisters? Can explode if they get to the ears of the wrong person. Hey, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. If you got an issue or something you want a question about, call in. Stay tuned. Oh, I had to turn it down. I had that crystal music in the way. Texas printed home tickets. Listen, when you say print, it needs to 
to convey the fact that you can easily buy tickets, coupon vouchers, and family packs online. Oh, we'll see, we're going to take some of those coupon vouchers and family packs online now at thinkpacks.com forward slash radio. Congratulations for Robert Oasis events, wedding and event planning. What a great time for us to get acquainted and determine what style, design, and package will work for your upcoming wedding, gala, social, or anniversary event. We specialize in helping people have a better event experience. Velvet Oasis Events customizes your event designs with your vision in mind. From beginning to end, we're there to assist. So for that wow experience, you won't forget. Remember Velvet Oasis Events. To get more details, go to velvetoasisevent.com, velvetoasisevent.com, or call 817-500-1579, The Northside Jail is back for the 11th big year. This community outreach event with a message of hope is a day of fun for the whole family. We'll have free food, free bounce houses, and free prizes. Platinum recording artist Howard Scott will be performing live. His Last time you should have, but well, also let me was well, join the conversation uh, with us in the studio today. <laughs> so we're going to get into one more. 
one more road, one more avenue that leads down to the city of murmuring, backbiting, and gossip. Insinuations. When a person throws out a, an, an, an insinuation, if the conversation usually starts off with, well, I think, mm. well, maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, but these are thoughts put out to control your thoughts, to control your view of a particular person. Keep that thing in mind. Um, give me Proverbs 26 and 20. The simulations run heavy. Let, 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 let a brother or a sister don't show up for three or four Sabbaths. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. Not a person not show up for a while. Instead of calling the brother or the sister to see if they're all right. Well, I, I, I think this going on with it. Well, do you know? Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 20. Uh -huh. Where no wood is, there, there the fire goes out. If you ain't paying attention to it, they can they can come at you whatever they want. They can come at you with all the I thinks and the maybes and the what else or what. If you if you ain't feeding into it, if you don't add no wood to it, then that fire is gonna go out. Fact. That road is gonna get shut down real quick. But as long as you sitting around there and you indulge it, that leads to the backbiting. The insinuations leads to the backbiting. Which it eventually leads to the slander. A whole multitude of spirits come behind that thing. You have to realize just one of these that we just that we covered tonight has a domino effect that leads you down the road to destruction. The most time you know already said, I don't deal with them. I don't deal with y'all like that. Why? Because you you're gonna end up breaking Leviticus 19:17. Let's get that real quick. Just so they know what they talk. So they know what I'm talking. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Mm. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. So you're not supposed to hate your brother in your heart. Sit, sitting around, paying attention to insinuation. Leads to slander, backbiting, murmuring, gossiping. You're hating your brother in your heart. That's why the Most High said, I'm going to cut you off. You will be destroyed. Because you have left that first thing, the law that was established, fresh out of Egypt. Like the captain said earlier, we was murmuring and gossiping when we came out. The gods were murmuring against Moses, murmuring against the Most High. They're sitting in, they sitting in, in the temple, murmuring against Moses. Most I had to snatch the sister out and put leprosy on. So you really have to be mindful. And keep the give me a uh, Wilson Solomon one and eight. You want to finish that off in Proverbs? Yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Proverbs 26, verse 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Uh -huh. So where there is no tailbearer. So if there's nobody gossiping, read. The strife cease. The cease strife it. and contention ceases. Within the body. Read that again. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Uh -huh. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. So if you ain't got nobody running around gossiping, there is no strife. Everybody can come, can come and enjoy the Sabbath like you're supposed to be. Instead of saying, oh man, these sisters again, I don't want to do it. Or be like, man, I know the brothers, man, they over there clip that I'm talking about. But it's all right, though, man. You know what I'm saying? You'll be happy to see your brother and your sister on the side. How holy days come around. But it all starts when that one person indulges and pays attention and he and, and adds wood to that one little seed that had been planted. So give me that in Wilson Solomon, chapter one of verse eight. 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 8. Yes, sir. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. So if you if you back if you gossiping, you back by your murmuring, all these unrighteous words, it will not be hid. The most high will expose you, you know. Neither shall vengeance when it punisheth pass by him. Sorry. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, mm. and the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. It says, For inquisition and examination shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, and the sound of his words, whatever you said before, the thing that was not hid, it says, For the sound of his words shall come unto the Lord for the mess for the mess. Manifestation. Manifestation. I couldn't get it <laughs> of his wicked deeds. Read on. For the ear of jealousy heareth all things, uh -huh. and the noise of murmurings is not hid. Read. Therefore, beware of murmuring, uh -huh. which is unprofitable. Murmuring is unprofitable. Why? Because it comes back on you in the end. It comes back to bite you in the butt in the end. Read on. And refrain your tongue from backbiting. Uh -huh. For there is no word so secret that shall go for naught. And the mouth that believe it slayeth the soul. Ooh. When it says that there is no word that's secret. What does that mean? If you got two people sitting around talking about you, you can, you can pretty much tell because one person is going to say something to, to let you know I don't say that to you. Why the hell do you say that? You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to help me get over my issue, you sit around talking about me and my issue. That's 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 how it's not hid anymore. That's how the secret words are they, they, they always come to light. Because now it always it never ever fails. It always happens. Read that verse again, please. Therefore, beware of murmuring, uh -huh. which is unprofitable, and refrain your tongue from backbiting. For there is no word so secret that shall go for that shall go for naught. Uh -huh. In the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. Oh, give me um Sirach nine eighteen. Sirach nine eighteen. Give me Sirach nine eighteen. Give me Sirach chapter 9 and verse 18 uh -huh. a man of Ill, of an ill tongue is dangerous in his city a man that's murmuring backbiting and gossiping the bible says he's dangerous in his city read on and he that is rash in his talk shall be hated it says he that is rash the word rash means reckless if you're reckless in your talk you will be hated you might enjoy yourself around your friends now or the ones you think are your friends because when the heat get put to the, to their feet, they be like, no, nah, that's, that's what he said. No, nah, that, that's what she told me that. I don't know what you're talking about, officer. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say it. Real quick. Hey. I promise you. It happens real quick. Hey, officer, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. On that, on that same note, uh, Proverbs, can you read Proverbs 21, uh, verse 23? Because somebody said, uh, as soon as somebody, they, they get the fire underneath their feet, they're going to throw the person who said it. They're going to throw them immediately underneath the bus. Yeah. Like that. Proverbs 21 and 23. Go ahead. Whoso keepeth his, his mouth uh -huh. and his tongue. So if you control your tongue and you control your mouth, sisters, brothers, read. Keepeth his soul from trouble. Say you, you will keep your soul from trouble. So you won't find yourself always in the middle of drama. Every time something come up, oh, he said it over here. Hey, sister, so-and-so. Now she said that. Hey, where you hear uh where you hear this from? Oh, that sister told me this. Uh two, three, uh, six situations come up, and it's the same brother or the same sister, majority sisters. The same sister keep coming up in somebody's mess. The Lord said, if you control your tongue, you won't find yourself in those situations. You will save yourself from those troubles. Uh want me to jump back? Yeah, I, I wanna uh, you uh what was the scripture you read about the dangerous in the city? Was it nine? Yeah, nine and eighteen. It says the old tongue is dangerous in the city. So you know you liken that city to the, the congregation. The scripture says uh, was a city set on a hill, right? So you know how you protect a city from those that have an ill tongue 
and it's habitual or repetitive. Proverbs 22 and 10. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 10. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. That evil spirit, they got to go. They got to be delivered to Satan until they get their mind right. Yeah. Until they get a clue. Because obviously after a year, two years of the same, the exact same correction, the yeah. exact same thing. It's not like we're it's talking about people. two, three, four different you know, spirits or situations, whatever the case is, we're talking about the, the exact same situation continues to come up over and over and over again to the point where, you know, when we, generally when you're putting somebody out, it's congregational issues that are coming up. It's things that are affecting the congregation. You know how, you know, different things that go on with brothers and it's individual things, that's fine. But when it's something where it affects the entire body or the city, like the scripture says, the scripture says, yo, you got to go. Man. It gets to a point where you can't control your tongue, so you you do it in the in the comfort of your, of your own house. Yes. You have to be delivered to Satan until you can get a clue. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, it was. Give me uh, Sirach 22 and 27. You have to be mindful of what you say, as the topic of the class is. Make a door in the bar for your mouth. Weigh your words. Read this. 27. 27. 22. Yeah. Sirach 22 and 27. Sirach. Oh, Should I, I not say it? No, yeah, yeah. Sirach. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> chapter 22 and verse 27. Uh -huh. Who shall set a watch before my mouth mm. and a seal of wisdom upon my lips that I, that I fall not suddenly by them and that my tongue destroys me not? Because your tongue will destroy. It says, who? I need somebody to watch out for me to make sure that I'm, I don't I don't speak reckless. Who does it? These law statutes and commandments do. If you follow in these, you're good. You ain't got to worry about somebody. Hey, bro, you are uh, talking a little bit too much. You might want to chill out. Hey, you, need, you need to put the strong drink down. Hey, sis, you had enough wine. That's your third bottle. Like Man, the county said about diarrhea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> diarrhea about the mouth right now. But I, I promise you, a surefire way to stop the murmuring, backbiting, and gossiping. If I can say it to you, then I should be able to say it to my brother. If I can say it to you, I should be able to say it to my sister. If more of that happened, if you call people on their BS more, I promise you. I promise you. They're going to be like, I can't talk to you no more. <laughs> now you're going to find, they're they going to find themselves by themselves, talking to themselves about every, because who can I talk to? Because if I talk to you, you're going to call me out silly. You know what I'm saying? That'll, that'll ease all that. He'll ease all that. I promise you. I promise you. Give me, oh, go ahead. Uh, read this in Sirach chapter 13. Uh, read Sirach 13 and 15 while I find some. Sirach 13. Uh, yeah. The book of Sirach, chapter 13 and verse 15. Every beast loveth his life, and every man loveth his neighbor. All flesh consorted according to kind. So the scripture says, every beast loveth his life, and every man loveth his neighbor. All flesh courted, uh, Con, uh, consorted according to kind, and a man will cleave to <coughs> his life. Mm -hmm. So, guess what? If one sister likes to murmur, she's going to find herself attached to and having a strong affinity for another sister that likes to murmur. Mm -hmm. so then, okay. And then you're going to get a group of gaggling geese that mm -hmm. need to be plucked out of the body. 33, 14, so it's about 33, 14. So, you know how you, uh, well, let's read this, Sirach 33, 14. So the scripture says, every beast consorted with his life, right? You're going to find yourself attached to or have an affinity for those that are either righteous in their speech and are continuing to grow and they haven't hit the ceiling in their spiritual understanding. Or you're going to attach yourself to those that have hit their ceiling 
and they on the decline because if you're not growing spiritually, you're backsliding. You're, there is no, you're just stagnant. You know, there's no growth or nothing like that. You're either moving forward and you're growing or you're going backwards. It's only those cold. Uh, the hot or cold. Yeah, you either hot or cold. There is no, if, if you not moving, yeah, that means you look warm. And if you call that you look warm, Christ gonna spew you out of his mouth either way. So read this. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 14. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. Why do I read that? Because those that are dealing evil in this speech, they're contentious, have strife, backbiting, gossiping, murmurs, whatever the case is, they're always going to be at odds against those that are either trying to correct them to get them right, or they'll always find try to find some sort of evil in a, in a sister that, or brother, we talking about sister, or a sister that, yo, know, sister's just trying to correct you. Yeah, but that sister, yeah, she off because she doing X, Y, and Z whenever she does. You're always looking for something evil. <laughs> Because that Eve, that the, the sin that's in you, that evil spirit that's in you, is always at odds, always set against the righteous. And they'll never, it's like oil and water, it'll never mix. That's why you'll never be amongst the godly like that. Or you'll be in there faking the funk, and you'll you know, fake the funk for so long. The rust will come back. Yeah, eventually. The rust will come back. You got something you want to bring out, uh, Officer Yama? Uh, Sirach 6 and 17. So you're flipping the pages right there. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, I gotta say something the same. No, officer, no, we gotta say you brought the scripture about every beast loving his life. But what does the scripture say? Go ahead. The book of Sirach, chapter six, and verse seventeen. Uh -huh. Who so fear of the Lord? So if you do have the fear of God running between your bones, read. Shall direct his friendship aright. So uh, what does it mean directing your friendship aright? The gossip and the murmuring, uh, all of those different things that won't be part of your conversation when. You uh, dealing amongst your brothers and your sisters, read. For as he is, so so are you, read. So shall his neighbor be also. So that's like that saying, the old saying in the world, you might have a bunch of brothers that smoke weed or something like that, but you don't smoke weed. Eventually, you're going to become that brother that smoke weed. Good. So you're hanging around the same group. So likewise, if you're around <clears throat> sisters that all they do is gossip, murmuring, you don't correct them, and say you do correct them, but you still hang amongst them. Yeah. And you will find yourself being that number seven or whatever it is. So the scripture said, as a friend is, so is their neighbor. Uh, that's all I got on that one. All right. Give me uh, Sirach chapter 51. Sirach chapter 51. The most I will defend you, I promise you. When, like the scripture we read earlier, that nothing will be kept secret. Not all the words will be brought to light. The most I will defend you. You have to make sure that you're rolling in the right spirit. You have to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing according to the commands. Read what you got. Sirach chapter 50, 51. Sirach chapter 51, verse one. We're going to verse 5. The book of Sirach chapter 51 and verse 1. I will thank thee, O Lord and King, and praise thee, O God, my Savior. I do give praise unto thy name, for thou art my defender and helper. And has preserved my body from destruction mm -hmm. and from the snare of the slanderous tongue. Because we read earlier what? In Proverbs, that if, 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 if you don't give heed to them, then you have saved your life. Basically. Read. And from the lips that forge lies. Uh -huh. And has been my helper against my adversary. So the most I save you from the lips that forge lies. Going into that slander. Read. And has delivered me according to the multitude of thy mercies. Mm -hmm. And greatness of thy name from the teeth of them that were ready to devour me. All they want to do is sit around and make mockery of you, sit around and talk about you. Read on. And out of the hands of such as sought after my life, mm -hmm. and from the manifold afflictions which I had, from the choking, read that again, from the choking of fire on every side, and from the midst of the fire which I kindled it not, uh -huh. from the depth of the belly of hell. From an unclean tongue. From an unclean tongue. And from lying words. Lying words. The Most High will save you. If you're rolling in the right spirit. Like the officer was, uh, officer living the world was going into. The same thing. You, you can't mix oil and water. You can't mix righteousness with unrighteousness. It will separate. The Most High will. Okay. You, I'm, I'm, I'm going to 
I've, I've noticed, I've noticed how the most high works. The most high will let you go for a time and do your thing. Give you a window of opportunity to repent and correct yourself. If you miss that window, now here comes the exposure. Now here comes time to put you on front street. That's why the scripture says the most high is long suffering. Yes, but he will in no wise let thee go. Let thee go. <laughs> no, but if you ain't correct yourself, like, like the captain said, he's long suffering. But if you don't correct yourself, he will in no wise let thee go. Give me uh Matthew 10 and 26. Yes, sir. Matthew, oh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 26. Uh -huh. Fear not, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Didn't we just read that in uh Sarah? Oh, was that wisdom of Solomon? It was in Solomon. It was in Solomon, chapter, chapter one. Yeah, chapter one. Read that again. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered. That shall not be revealed uh -huh. and hid that shall not be known. So the most I will expose. Christ is saying it right here. There is nothing to hid. I don't care if the brothers or sisters sitting around, they on the phone with each other. Hey, I'm gonna come to your house. I got some wine, girl, and we're gonna talk about this, sister. Oh, hey, brother, come on over, man. I, I throw some burgers on the grill. You got the strong, and they over there talking about brothers or leadership or whatever. The most high will expose you eventually. He gives you a, a window of time to correct yourself. They say, like, like this might be my correction right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, when I was putting it together, I'm like, man, I'm dealing with I'm dealing with some of this, some of these things. I got to examine myself a little bit though. I got to correct myself. Now, what if I didn't correct myself? Or, or either had the mindset to correct myself. Then the next two, three weeks on down the road, the most high done exposed me in front of everybody. They're like, damn, man, I ain't, I ain't know I was saying, man, I was like that. Everything will, will, will be brought to the light if you don't deal with that. If you don't, if you, if you're trying to maneuver, you're trying to hide, you're trying to be sneaky and slide with it, the most high will expose you. I promise you. I promise you. But like I said, this is something that's, that's very important. It's issues that's been going on uh, here in Dallas that uh, I felt needed this to be addressed. And it's, it's going on through, throughout a few other congregations that I've heard. You know what I mean? But from time to time, you have to, we all have to be mindful. We all have to sit back and reflect on our, give me that, uh, what's that scripture in Proverbs? I sing my song in the night. Oh, what's that song? Yes, yeah, song. Song. Oh. Yep, I got you. Uh, Give me one, one seven to seven, 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 seven to six. The Book of Psalms, chapter seventy-seven and verse six. I like that one way better. Yeah. I call to remembrance my song in the night. So he says, I call to remembrance my song in the night. What, whatever you do during the day, how your interaction with brothers and sisters, the words that you let come out of your mouth, or even the thoughts that you've had, you call into remembrance everything that you've done before you pray, before you put head to pull up and go to sleep. You call into remembrance the day's actions. What else? Real. I commune with my own heart, uh -huh. and my spirit made diligent search. It says my spirit made a diligent search. So you go in, you, you, you want to make sure that your, your actions of that day has been as righteous as can possibly be. If not, then when you pray, most high, I pray that you let me get over this spirit here. I pray that you give me uh, more, more long suffering to deal with my brothers and sisters. If you're not doing, if you're not going through that examination, I promise you. The most high, he said, he, he just said, I'll cut you off. We read the scripture earlier. So we truly have to be mindful of the way that we wrote it. Now, I, like I said earlier, some of this stuff, these avenues to this murmuring, gossiping, and backbiting stuff, it's needful at times, but depending on the spirit that you're rolling in makes it wicked as hell. 
if, if I see a brother doing something and I plan to see an officer Linda Wells here, so now we're both mindful, we're both watching the brother. It wasn't to assassinate that brother's character. It was like, okay, for the betterment of the body, let's keep an eye on him. But if I do a hey, officer Linda Wells, I think that brother, and then we sit around joking about it, nothing to do with the betterment of the body, we wrong. I'm wrong for even doing it. I have to examine myself. But that's about all I got. I pray that. No, 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 so what if scenario? What if you have, you know, sisters that are dealing in the, you know, spirits, whether it be back by whatever the case is, and a situation comes up, and let's say, you know, sisters are involved, but they're not informing their husbands of what's going on. What 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 are y'all what are y'all thoughts around that? What what are you all's thoughts around that? So sisters are involved in some gossip, whatever you know, whatever the case is, and it ends up getting you know it, it ends up turning uh, turning left because you know somebody finds out the wrong information, whatever the case is, and it ends up turning left, and the sisters is just all of them out the spirit of whatever the case is. But nobody's informing the, the husbands and nothing like that. What are y'all thoughts on that? If, if, if I find out that my wife was privy to a bunch of sisters sitting around gossiping and I find out that she didn't say anything, I need to correct my wife. Obviously, I'm not doing, I'm not teaching or she's not understanding or maybe a little bit of both, but something has some 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 kind of movements need need to happen within my house. Period. Some 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 kind of movement needs to happen in my house. Uh, I, I completely agree. Uh, I was gonna say that's pretty much that's that's the basis of us building our houses first. You yes. know what I'm saying you teach your wife certain things because understanding that women do gossip amongst themselves more than men do certain things the women or our wives as husbands they should they should already have the understanding in scripture or we should at least go uh through the scriptures with them that way when they, when they run into a situation they're able to stop them when they can um and as far as what you said if she didn't tell me i mean i'll have to go right straight back to the scriptures again because yeah. the scripture says you see sin going amongst and you don't do nothing about it it's, that's on your hands that's not the biggest problem now you you going back you breaking uh Leviticus nineteen. I agree with that because let me say something too. Uh, also, even on that same note, if you think about it, the scripture said to love your neighbor as yourself, right? Yeah. So in order for if I was to love you, right, and I see you in the midst of sin, and me knowing the judgment for for sin, if he was walking around gossiping, murmuring, whether whatever it was, and I don't say nothing, and then the Lord judges you, does that show that you really love your neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you understand, if you really fear God, you know, God said he will jack you up for doing certain sins, or sins in general. God will kill you or whatever his judgment is for sin. So why would I let my brother or my sister go out into the, the way of the Lord's judgments? It just wouldn't make no sense if I truly have love for my neighbor. That's, that's um, that breaking that little bit, because 19. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, <laughs> that's going back to the basics. You got to love your neighbor as yourself. I promise you, because charity, because when you when you go through the scriptures, uh, First Corinthians thirteen, when you read about charity, it covers a, a whole host of uh issue that that you really have to examine yourself with. You know what I mean? Because let's say my wife says she uh she hears somebody murmuring or whatever, and don't and don't speak on. It. Now is she thinking evil? What was, was she co-signing on what was said? She rolling with charity or not? <clears throat> so, which, which goes right back? Either I'm not teaching correctly, or she's not learning correctly, or a little bit of both. But movement needs to happen. That is good. Uh, can somebody read me uh, Psalm forty-one, verse seven? 
Uh, just because on the same note, I'm gonna bring up one of the uh, the words that go with gossip and murmur. Uh, this is whispering. Is what it is. I'm gonna right, read this definition real quick. Uh, the the definition of a whisper. It says uh, to speak quietly and privately as by way of gossip, slander, or intrigue. Mm-hmm. So going back to the same thing we're talking about, whispering is one of those uh, one of those pathways to get to the city of gossip and murmur. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. So what I'm about to show you right now is the spirit that you're in if you are in the midst of those things. Uh, read on. The book of Psalms, chapter 41, and verse 7. Uh-huh. All that hate me. All that what? All that hate Hatred. me. Read. Whisper together against me. Uh-huh. Against me. Do they devise my hurt? So the Lord said, all they that hate someone, they're going to be in the midst of that sin. If you actually gossiping or you murmuring about somebody, the Lord said that's hatred. We understand First John 3 and 15 says what? If you got hatred in your heart, I'm paraphrasing, but um, it says something about uh, it's murder. Uh, murder right? Yeah, it's murder. If you, said, <laughs> you got the spirit of hatred, that's murder. It's the same thing. So to, for you to be in a, the spirit of gospel and murmur, you are a murderer, and there's no salvation for you if you don't correct yourself and uh, put yourself on the right path for that thing. That's why the most I say, I will cut you off. That's right. Destroy you. Cap, you you got something on that uh on that question? You got anything additional you want to add on that? Yeah, stop murmuring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then so then that my follow up question to that would be, Cap, I'll start off with you. How much should a sister be telling her husband if they're having issues or if they're hearing? murmuring gossip whatever the case is should they i'm saying should they okay let me just correct it man let's just move on or yeah let me just tell the sister stop it and let's move on or does she go to her husband and tell him well it depends on the re- it depends on the responsibility of the husband i mean um certain sisters you know their husbands have uh, certain positions within the church and uh they should uh those sisters should look should know uh what to apply or uh, what scriptures to apply in certain events. They should be able to stop the murmur when they hear it. Some stuff don't even need to come back to the husband's ears. You know, especially uh, sisters with uh, who are senior senior sisters, sisters that's been in the body for a long time and so forth. I think they should be able to address uh, certain things and with without having to bring it back to their husbands. Now, if it's too much for them, then they bring it back to the mm-hmm. husbands, and then the husbands take care. Because a lot of the stuff is this folly and stupid stuff. And she didn't say hi to me, or she gave me a ride somewhere, and I don't. She dropped me. She didn't drop me off in front of the store. I had to walk. Or this is complete, just nonsense. Like girly stuff. <laughs> girly, girly <laughs> stuff. Like it's corny. We gotta really. Spend a Sabbath talking about <laughs> sister issues that should that should be handled. It's corny. It's taken away from the work of the Lord. That's why certain certain sisters just stay home, stay home and watch online until you get your mind right. Especially you sisters that are married to husbands that can't get you in order. Just stay home, watch TV, do what you do best. And when you get your when you get your you know, your cerebral cortex back in the line with the most high, then you can come back to the line. That's gonna be my that's gonna be my thing. Just get out, stay home. When you're ready, when you when you get your mind right, mm-hmm. then come back. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go, sisters. I mean, you know, I, want, I, I wanted to give them some some practical advice, you know, because some sisters they tell their husband every little freaking thing that go wrong. And it, I tell my wife, don't do it. Oh my goodness. Listen, if a sister step on your big toe, man, just, if a sister apologize, why we got to sit and talk about that thing for an hour? We don't have to ever. The sister apologize. Let's move on. Let's move on. What else we talking about? What else we talking about? <laughs> Sirach 27. <laughs> Sirach chapter 27. In verse, uh, but it, it caps to your point too. That, like you said, if there's certain issues that that sisters can't handle, but what's happening is sisters are trying to take things on that are just too heavy for them, and they wait to the point where sisters are about to come to blows before they even bring their husbands in to be able to to handle the situation. 
Yeah. You can't do that. You, 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 can't, you can't be too far to the left and too far to the right. You got to know, you know, if it's a thing of, okay, I'm not really sure. Let me just get some advice real quick. Then, you know, no problem. Go ahead and go to your husband. If it's something you know you can deal with, cool. But don't wait until y'all getting ready to, to throw blows or y'all get, y'all call, <laughs> calling each other bees and, and all this other stuff to, to bring somebody in to be able to handle the situation. Y'all got to be able to use wisdom. And if not, go to a sister that's been around for a minute to, you know, to ask because, it, you know, she, she should be able to deal with it before it even comes up, you know. Sirach so chapter 27 and verse uh, 6. Okay. Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 27, verse 6. It's the book of Sirach chapter 27 and verse 6. The fruit declares if the tree have been dressed. So the fruit declares if a tree has been dressed. When it says dressed, it means it's been fertilized, it's been watered. So you can tell if a tree, if the fruit is good on it. If oh, the man. oranges are good, you know, they're not bruised up and all this other stuff. They're nice and bright or whatever it is, lemon tree or whatever. You know it's, if it's been dressed and it's been uh, properly taken care of, it's been watered, so on and so forth, right? Go ahead. So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. So what does that mean? Read it again. The fruit declare it if the tree have been dressed. Not important, go ahead. So is the utterance. So is the utterance. So are the words. So is the speech of a conceit in the heart of man. What you say, how you talk, we can tell if you're really in the word of God, if you're really studying. If you're really applying the scriptures, it's going to be evident in your speech. So brothers and sisters, don't think that you're going to get by with really nice fringes and a nice head covering and a nice dress. And we won't be we're not spiritual enough to, to be able to tell if, OK, yo, you got a, you got a serious gasping spirit on you. You got a serious murmuring spirit on you. It's going to be it's going to be evident just like you can. I can I can look at a tree. And see if the tree's been well, if it's been well nourished. I can I can hear a brother or a sister's speech and be like, okay, yeah, I'll pray your brother or sister been, been studying, or yeah, the sister's been watching Bad Girls Club as opposed to watching class. So she's been watching whatever whatever other show is out. I don't know, uh, I don't know whatever other show on MTV and BET, whatever y'all watch. We can it's gonna be heaven. Don't think that. The murmuring, the backbiting, and the gossiping is only limited with all the sisters or just all the brothers. This can go on in your marriage too. If, if you got a couple and the wife always got something to say about her husband, when she get around other sisters, that should not be so. She always murmuring, she always talking bad about her husband. Sister, you wrote, you not wrote like, like the officer was going into. We know if you want to spend it or not. We know it's evident. And it happens. It happens a lot. I get the call. I'm telling you. I know you're not rolling in the spirit. And I'm, I'll be on the phone. I'll, I'll indulge for 15, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Hmm. Hey, gotta make sure you. Well, that's a command to say. Oh, okay, okay. All right, then, appreciate it. Shalom. Hold on, Christ. It's nothing more. If you ain't, if you don't want to, if you can get the scriptures and don't want to roll in the spirit, well, okay, I don't have matching scriptures in there. I got a lot of scriptures highlighted, and none of them match me. I promise you. Stay in the scriptures. <laughs> Keep the commandments. Go back and learn the basics. Um, yeah, go from that. Uh, Sirach chapter 20, go back to Sirach chapter 27, verse 3. Sirach 27, verse 3. So, going back to going back to the men, because even myself, I'm, I'm guilty too. You know, I gotta, I gotta correct myself and get myself, um, you know, in line and back in tune and everything else. So I want to read this again for a minute. Go ahead. 
Sirach chapter 27 and verse 3. Because I'll say this, your wife is a reflection of you. All right. So if you are, if your wife is shooting off at the mouth every 10, 15 minutes, and she she has no control over, over her, her spirit, she does not practice temperance. Temperance means self-control. It's because of you. I hope you're listening, brother. I ain't gonna call your name, but I hope you're listening. Read that. Unless a man, hold the reader. Sirach 27 and verse 3. Unless a man hold himself diligent in the fear of the Lord. So stop. Unless the husband holds himself diligently in the fear of the Lord, he's studying and applying the scriptures, praying to the most high. What's gonna happen? His house. Shall soon be overthrown. You are going to be the demise through your wife. The demise of your entire house is going to come by way of your wife. We'll have a Jeremiah 44 moment. You're going to have a Jeremiah 44. <laughs> You're going to go all the way back to Genesis or Adam and Eve. And now we're all subject to sin because Adam couldn't control Eve. That's what's going to happen. The things that are written in full time were written by learning. So unless you hold yourself diligently to the fear of the Lord, and that goes for your entire house, guess what? Your entire house is going to be embarrassed. Your wife won't embarrass you in the entire house. And then y'all going to be the ones learning from home until you get your mind right. So, brothers, I, you know, fair warning. Fair warning. Get yourself together. And if you need help, there's plenty of brothers, there's plenty of brothers around that can help you out. There's plenty of classes online. Like it's the same scriptures. Like when I don't know what other book you want us to pull out that's gonna make you up and up and up and you know get some testicular fortitude, but shoot, yeah. I don't know what else to tell you, man. You got a prayer and application. Prayer and application. You gotta apply. So I was talking to a brother once. I'm like, man, my wife just this one or two about scripture just brought out. Like, man, my wife, she always argues, and we end up going back and forth. I'm like, stop arguing with me. What the hell wrong with you? You like, you make it sound so easy. Brothers, how hard can it be to be like? And turn your head. But if you don't hold yourself diligent in your house, man, it's going to be overthrown. The wife is going to run the house. You're going to be sitting around with your head down every Sabbath, every time the scriptures come out because you're cut. I promise you that's going to happen. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you ask something? No. Uh, go to, uh, what's that? All right, go to, uh, Time. Ecclesiastes chapter 25. Where's the scripture where it says, uh, oh goodness. Hey, if y'all got any questions, if y'all got any comments, y'all got any concerns, what's the call in number? 214-431-5032. Again, 214-431-5032. Watch this. Sirach chapter 25 and verse 17. The book of Sirach chapter 25, 25 and verse 17. The wickedness of a woman changes her face. Oh, no, no. Jump down to uh, oh, we got a call. Oh, we got a call. All right. Okay, Shalom. Thank you for all of this calling. Hello. Okay, call back, caller. Whoever just called in, call back. Uh, read verse 20. Shalom, most high Christ's blessing. Call in the scripts. Call oh, keeps falling. They got a uh, shot of your foot here at the radio station. The call, the call keeps falling, so uh, just text your question. Just text it in the comment section and we'll, we'll answer it. Yeah. Go to Facebook. You can go to Facebook. And you can type your comment in. You're not able to get through on Skype. You can text your question in. 
or your comment, whatever it is. Why not get that together? Let's read some rock chapter 25. Oh. 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 Hello? Hello, can you hear us? I apologize, Paula. I sincerely apologize. All right, let's read Sarah chapter 25, verse 20. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 20. As the climbing up the sandy way is to the feet of the age, so is a wife full of words to a quiet man. So, sisters, some, some, some friendly advice from your brother, Emmanuel, your brother, uh, Amiel, and the rest of the brothers in here. <laughs> Yo, man, the, the best thing you can do is just. That's not gas. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the best thing you can do. That'll keep you out of so much trouble, man. Church, bro, I cannot I cannot tell you how many sisters my wife had to be like, sister, just be quiet. It don't matter if you want. Just be quiet. <laughs> don't want which which one would you be teach your husband? Shut up. Mm -hmm. Jump down to verse um, 24. Verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Through Eve. And through her we all die. And through her, I should end death to all of us. Come on. Give the water no passage. Neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. This is the scripture I use to justify your, your husband's man. Step up, cut off the Facebook, cut off the IG, cut off the what else, Twitter. And all of these different mediums, all these different um, uh, provisions that you make for your wife to get abroad. If she's not temperate in her speech, if she's not temperate in her thumbs when it comes to typing or, or sharing a message, which she knows she's throwing shots at another sister or the brother, he knows he's throwing shots at another brother. They just got into an argument. You just so happen to find that meme or that. Uh, that gift yeah. <laughs> that goes right with the situation y'all was just in. Yeah. The best thing you can do is just just cut it off for time. If it's a week, if it's two weeks, or whatever the case is, until she can prove herself that okay, you know what? I need to fall back, man. I was dumb. What the hell did I do that? For? Because of the woman, that was the beginning of sin. I can get some Chinese handcuffs for the thumbs, man. Yeah, you gotta be careful. <laughs> the brothers had to make excuses. Mm -hmm. They know they know what kind of wives they got. Mm -hmm. It's the same way she's in the congregation, it's the same way she's at home. Right. Sisters, do we know what kind of husbands you got? The same way he's in the congregation, he's at home. So when you make excuses for them, shame on them. Uh, get, uh, uh, what what Cap just said, James chapter, James chapter 3, James chapter 3, verse 14. Because this is what's kept, what what Cap is saying. You're making excuses or whatever the case is. Come on. James chapter 3, verse 14. What doth the prophet, my brethren? James chapter 3, verse 14. Oh, 3, sorry. 3, 14, 3 and verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart. You got bitter envy and strife in your mind, which eventually manifests in your speech. Go ahead. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Don't glory in the thing. And don't lie against the truth by saying, making excuses. Oh, well, you know, the sister did her wrong because she did X, Y, and Z. Or, <coughs> or oh, no, nah, you know, she ain't like that off yet, man. You know, Kat, she, you know, she, that was just one time thing. I ain't one time, man. She's been doing that for the last six months. She's been doing that for the last year. But you continue to make excuses, or you're the brother that talks so exceeding proudly. Now, I got my wife to check. Oh no, no, brother, not not my wife. No, I got her in check. She in total subjection. Meanwhile, she runs her mouth. She is in total subjection to Esau. <laughs> Dak. Mm. Mm. 
Not to you at home, black man. That's a Jeremiah 44. Mm -hmm. Not to you. She ain't in subjection to you. But let you tell it. Oh, you got her. You got her bound. But in her actions, in how she conducts herself amongst other sisters, out the way she conducts herself outside of the Sabbath, because at the Sabbath she's so righteous, or he's so righteous, but back at the ranch, she knocking you upside the head. But to make yourself feel good or whatever, you know, you, you gotta, yeah, brother, nah, man, I'm my way. Yeah, she's a total subjection. You know, they used to have a uh, saying back in the day, like, my wife in the lane. I can go home and still be a man. <laughs> that that don't hold true for a lot of brothers. Right. Get home, your wife know you're a punk. She got shut, shut up. No, you go you go clean out. <laughs> yeah, make sure the socks and wrong is cold too before you go to bed. Our wife's a punk. All right, brothers, sisters. I'll pray to the most side. Another show in the bag. I'll pray to the most side. Pray. Brothers and sisters was edified and um, you know, take it and apply it, you know, apply the scriptures to your life um so that we can get out of this God forsaken hellhole of a captivity. Um other than that, y'all tune in tomorrow. Culture vultures is the title of the show. Hip hop is message. All right, so 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. You can check us out on Facebook, check us out on it on uh, oh gosh, YouTube, Facebook. check us out on YouTube Live, check us out on Instagram. All right, y'all are tuned in the end of scripts. Reloaded. Shalom. That was uh, LA's off of uh, Wake Up. Yeah, he's like, I didn't know what I was doing. I